Hi guys and gals. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> we're in Lightroom. We are we're in Lightroom. Um, now then, why am I in Lightroom? Oh, I need a day off from real therapy. Yeah, learning. Oh dear. Anyway, um, yes, why am I in Lightroom? It's because I'm going to show you something in Photoshop, to be quite honest. And it's with these two shots now. We had uh, a big raft of um, updates for Lightroom and Photoshop and last week. And, uh, I mean, people have been asking me all sorts of things about them and what I would think of them and not a lot, not really. A lot of excitement over them and... Mm, mm. But something in particular has cropped up. And I think I've been asked probably about 25, 30 times in the last sort of five or six days. Select subject in Photoshop. Mm, doesn't work. Mm, yes. Um, well, it does. Um, because you can see it demonstrated on a lot of YouTube videos that are about the new updates. The only thing is, if you listen very carefully to what the... Uh, um, guys who do, guys and girls who do those videos say, um, Adobe Sensei, yes, <laughs> Sensei, Jesus, uh, there's about as much Sensei going on in Photoshop as there is in My Missus, yeah, <laughs> not a lot, but Adobe Sensei, so they say, has been sort of geared towards portraits and hair masking, so, yeah, and Select subject doesn't work on other sort of subjects. And what we're going to do is a short exercise here on these two shots. Firstly, this one, which I'm sure if you're a regular subscriber to my YouTube channel, you will have seen before. And all we're going to do is we're going to change the composition of this shot without cropping it. In other words, we're going to move the bird in the sky. And the second shot is this one and uh, as i always say my patreon members will be able to download these shots um to uh, use on their own and um, you'll have to email me if you're a patreon member and you want to download this um because i'll find some other way of delivering it to you because it's a hundred meg yes oh <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a big file so we won't be putting this particular shot up for download but anyway um, let's get the important thing over with. First of all, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Um, if you're not already subscribed, click the subscribe button. Click the little ringety tingety bell so it can do its thing and let you know next time I put a video up. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That's that. So what I'm going to do is, have I actually got them open in Photoshop? Yes, I have. I've got both of these images open in Photoshop. Well, we're going to start... Ooh, with this one it's the simplest one and we've now got this select subject tool which you can find next to your quick selection tool or your magic wand tool and we'll just use that and you can see we've got select subject now you'd think that selecting the subject would be easy so we'll just ask it to select the subject and there you go it's selected the subject what a bloody... Why has it left these humongous gaps in the selection? It's crackers. Absolutely mental. Now, of course, what they say you should do now is go into Select and Mask. I'm bringing it in on a black background, as you can see, with the opacity turned up to 100%. And then we've got to go and get the old modification tool and uh, start painting away and this version of the select and mask tool um, is just like the old one in that you really do want to be getting into all the nooks and crannies really in one pass and uh, yeah it's it's doing the job but by golly gosh it's going to take an awfully long time so we're going to click cancel on that and we're going to command Z to undo that selection and we're going to use an older tool. Now you've seen me demonstrate this before but 
Ah, I just thought I'd throw it in to refresh everybody's memory. And all we're going to do is go to select and we'll select by color range. Now, previously I've actually sampled just this sky. You can see I'm in an 11 by 11 average. Just bob on that blue sky. Sample colors under color range. Thought it was 33, range 100, Bob's your uncle. If it does come out looking a little bit black and speckly, just hit the plus button and just run your cursor along there. Rather like that. And that will give you a really cool selection. So, we'll just go and click OK. Now then, what do we need to do? We need to, first of all, go and add a mask. And of course, that's the wrong way around. So we'll invert that. And then all I'm going to do is simply duplicate that layer. And I don't need the mask on that layer. So we're going to bin it. So we'll go delete. And I'll turn my masked eagle off. And I'm just going to get the lasso tool. And Patreon members will be able to download this shot. So they can play along with Andy in the video. And there we go. And all we're going to do is go to Edit. And we're going to go to Content Aware Fill. And there we go. Should really wait for the little twirly dots to stop spinning, but we'll click OK. And we'll just wait for it to finish off. And remove the eagle from the sky. Whew, I am roasting. I want to get on with this video because I'm absolutely roasting. Um, the UV outside is through the blooming roof. I've got my office window shut and I've got all my fans turned off. So <laughs> I'm really, really, really hot. So what we'll do now is we'll just go select, deselect. And there we go. And he's done a really good job. Now that content to wear Phil has done a better job of this sort of thing now with the latest update than it would have done this time last week. Um, it, it has really been improved a lot and you can't really see the benefits of it in this particular example quite so much. But all I'm going to do now is turn the old mask out eagle on and we'll just go and get the move tool. And of course he's badly composed there. Now, if I was going to do a print of this shot, I might sort of put him around there. And if I was going to send this shot up for editorial composition, I might actually put him up there. And then we could have text stripped along there, text down here, and then opening out and going along there as well. Alrighty. So that's that shot done. And because... We've only moved the bird against the sky, and there's not really a lot of definition, or I should say, not a lot of variation in colour in the sky. We didn't need to go into the D fringe for the select and mask, which, if we were moving the eagle from blue sky to cloud or cloud to blue sky, we might have had to use a little bit of um, decontamination of colour on the edges. But I will do a lesson on the um, select and mask at some point along the way. But um, whether you can actually do it as slickly as that inside of uh, GIMP, I don't know. I don't know. But this is one of the many reasons I always like Photoshop. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can actually do that in the likes of Affinity Photo either. I suppose you can. But there you go. So... That's that shot done. Now then, I'm going to come over to this next one. This is the 100 meg TIFF file, which my Patreon members can email me or give me a call or text me if they want me to send it to them. Um, but I'm not going to put this up for general download because it's 100 meg. Take a long time to upload that. Anyway, now, ostensibly, this the reason it's big is because it's a TIFF file. And it's, um, it's basically derived from two raw files. And it's obviously a high-speed flash, um, liquid motion, splishy, splashy shot. 
and it's done against a white translim background and if you don't know what translim is it's really good it's like a plastic a white plastic semi-translucent um, backdrop that you can actually backlight and uh, it's very very good but of course you have a bit of a problem when you start chucking water around like this and just so as you know this at the bottom that the glass is standing on is a piece of black perspex yes it is and all the light is coming from three or four sba hundreds which are behind the trans loop gaffer taped in with the heads gaffer taped inside a big bowl reflector and the only light that's on the foreground is actually coming from two polystyrene ceiling tiles the smooth side or the back side of a couple of polystyrene ceiling tiles which are at sort of 40 45 degrees either side of the camera lens just to bounce the flash back into the actual subject so all the light in this really is backlight with a bit of bounced fill uh, coming into the foreground and you know i mean you have to take one shot with the glass with no splash because you, you just get all sorts of mess all along this uh, black perspex or whatever you're using as a set bait so you take a couple of shots of that and then you start adding thumb throwing the water around now the only thing is when you start throwing this water around now quite a lot of it goes on the translucent background but of course you can hardly see any imperfections you can just about make them out in here but if i go to greg benzie's lumenzia and um, there's something else you can't have in gimp or affinity photo and um, if you haven't got greg benzie's lumenzia do a search on my youtube channel for lumenzia go and watch some of the videos click the little link in any of the descriptions and i will actually put it in the um, description for this video as well because uh, Greg chucks me a book or two and uh, every time you buy it and uh, yeah anyway oh, waffling on but I'll just come to Lumenzia and I'll just hit a lights three mask and there you go now you can see all the crap on the translim background alrighty so what we need to do is we need to get rid of that rubbish so what we're going to do is create a new empty layer and um, we'll have to remove the padlock from layer zero or the background layer and then we are going to go to edit and we're going to fill it fill um, and we'll check color that will bring our color picker up and i'm going to fill it with ooh, what i'll come over here uh, is it leaving it in an 11 by 11 point average we'll just click there i might make it just a little bit brighter okay and we'll click okay now, now you can see the background this is going to be our new background well of course if i click on this photo we could say in the quick actions um, remove background yeah done a really good job haven't it <laughs> yeah so we could go command z to undo that we can go select subject and it will give us exactly the same result and i don't even need to make a mask out of this because you can tell we've got isolated selections where there should be contiguous selections or continuous selections and We've got a broken selection here, so we just know that is not going to work. But we'll just go and add a mask, and as you can see, we get the same blooming result. So, how are we going to do this? Can we can we use select color range to effectively remove the background, including all the splash marks on the translucent background, and give it a clean background? From this layer below um, can we use any of these inbuilt adobe tricks no can we use the new subject selection tool um, we could say right let's try a rectangle 
and we'll leave it in enhance edge and object subtract Ooh. let's just see what it makes of that particular rectangle no it's missed major parts of it here and we've got all sorts of gaps in selections there no this is because I think its functionality has been really zeroed in for looking for super fine detail. We didn't have any super fine detail, such as you would find in hair, um, either in the eagle shot, and we haven't got it in this. We've got small detail, but we haven't got fine detail. So we will just go Command Z. And Andy, how are we going to do this piece of cake? Alrighty, so if we go to select, remember we chose color range, which is an old tool, yeah? We've got another tool underneath it, which is an old tool as well. It's not as old as color range, um, but it's been around quite a while. And if I hit focus area and just leave everything on auto and let it do its thang, right? Everything we can see covered in red ruby lith is going to go away, it's going to disappear, it's going to be taken away, it's going to be minused, it's going to be cancelled, it's going to be deleted. Righty, so we've got gaps, we've got a gap over here, and so what we'll do is we'll just go and tap in there, having selected the minus or the take away brush, and we've also got background showing through here. Um, all this lot here is a complete flat sheet, if you like, of water. So what we need to do is we need to just dot in there with the minus brush. And uh, ooh, that hasn't worked, has it? So let's just do a little squiggle. And there we go. So we've caught up. Now we've just got a little bit of red rubyolith showing there. And we've got another little bit over there. So what we need to do now is go to plus because we want to include those in our selection. So we'll just paint over that one. And that's disappeared. And we'll paint over that one. So that's disappeared. And that's looking really good. If you notice, we've just got another little bit over there. And just let the little whirly gig thing finish. Now then, here's the thing, yeah? So what we're going to do is just use the plus button to take it up and hold the space bar down. And let's go and just have a look at this selection. Now, this selection isn't made yet. It's just this red ruby lith. So as you can see, it's a little bit on the jagged side. So what we're going to do is, if you see, if I take soften edge off, Look at it now. <laughs> yes. So we'll just enable soften edge again and then we'll go into select and mask. And keeping it at this high magnification view, what I'll do is I'll just put 10 points of smoothing in. And can you see how that sort of really got rid of the majority of those sort of jagged bits? Let's just take it up to 13. I think that's looking A-OK. -okay. Let's just hold the spacebar key down and uh, come over a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's looking all right. Now, all I'm going to do is to just shift the edge in. By about minus, somewhere between minus 5 and minus 10%. I don't want to go too overboard. In point of fact, I might actually just take that up to minus six minus five and then it return and uh, i think that's going to be a okay so i'll now click the okay button and so now you can see we've got our active selection don't forget we are looking at this image at 300 percent so i'm going to come out to fit to screen view now you'd think that if we clicked select subject, this would be the selection that we will get because for sure, that's the selection that we want. 
isn't it? So, what am I going to do now? Really easy. I'm just going to click on the masking icon. Ta-da! There's our background layer turned off, or I should say our new background layer turned off. There's our new background layer turned on. And if I go to Greg's All Light 3 in Lumenzia, now you can see I've got a completely clean, clear, splodge-free background. And if we turn this mask off and just hold shift and click, so we turn that mask off and now we can see we've got all the crap in our background showing through again. So I think we're going to activate that. Um, I don't need Greg's um, Lumenzi turned on anymore. Just using it as a bit of a mask preview just to show you the detail. Alrighty, so all I'm now going to do is go save. And we'll just wait for this to save out. And we'll come back over to Lightroom. And as if by magic, here it is with its clean background. And the only thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of a vignette on. In highlight priority, drag the midpoint all the way down to the left. Feathering all the way up to the right. And then just have a little play. And I'm quite liking that. Yes! That looks really cool. Because I like the vignetting effect that we got on here, on the original image. Not quite as um, obvious as it is on here. But of course, over there, we got all that really nasty stuff in the background. Which was nothing to do with dust spots or anything like that. It was just rubbish on the background, background marks. So there we go. And I think that looks well cool. So there you go, guys and gals. Hope you've learned something useful. I um, hope you've enjoyed that video. If, if you have, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. If you're not subscribed, go click this subscribe button. Click the old ringety tingety bell to get a notification the next time I put a video up. And uh, yeah, you never know. The next video might be another raw therapy one. Woo <laughs> okay, guys and gals. Stay safe, stay well, keep taking the pictures, and uh, I'll see you soon. Cheerup!